afternoon. We will present the rise of communism in China by Natalia Chavarria, Catherine Diaz, In Young Heo, and me, Jonathan Marigal. Aim. Why did China choose communism over nationalism? Skill. Evaluate their various circumstances and causes that led China rise to communism. Do now. Write what you observe on the propaganda poster. Infer what you saw on the poster. Read pages 882 and 886 and make a two-column journal. Take notes about the observation you see on the image. Main ideas. Sun Jixian gave power to his general, his general Jun Shikai, who betrayed democratic ideals. Inference. Lenin and Trotsky that Stalin became into power, which caused a lot of death. While watching this video, write down positive and negative effect that communism had in China. A positive effect of communism in China results on stability for the country. Before this happened, this country had many civil wars and conflicts. Communism implemented policies that united the country. The negative aspect of communism include loss of freedom, unfair treatment, and discrimination. Workers were usually treated like machines. Nationalism in China Sun Yishan was the leader of the Nationalist Revolution. He gave power to Yuan Shikai who ignored revolution idea and after his death, civil war broke out. Rise Communism in China China thought they could regain back by helping the Allies, but they fall under Japan control after the treaty. Since nationalist leader couldn't reinforce their rule, many Chinese turned into Lenin's communism. Communism in China Mao Zedong had developed his own brand of communism for a rural country. Lenin took the chance to help China communist group by providing support to national group in exchange that the communist group could join the Kuomintang, a revolutionary group. The Civil War in China Nationalist groups started killing communist leaders and began a civil war. Mao and other leaders took peace into his army and trained them into guerrilla warfare. Many people died due to the temperature and enough Starvation. Japan launched a full invasion which forced both groups to unite. National Assembly had agreed to make chances to Sun Jishan principles. Jian Jishay had promised to had promised to improve everyone's but since his government was full of corruption, all of his followers started following the communist group.
This image shows how their main goals were. Make China industrial and agricultural nation. The main symbol of the communist scene is the hammer and the sickle that represent the working class and the agricultural class together. Uh, these symbols have an origin of Russia with the communist scene of Stanley. October the 1st, 1949, was the day A, the People's Republic of China, the world's most populous country, was proclaimed a communist state. Till that day, the People's Liberation Army, led by Mao Zedong, had fought a bitter civil war against the nationalists. Now they were victorious, and Mao took over the reins of government. The nationalists fled to the offshore island of Formosa, and set up a rival government in Taipei. Nationalist leader Chiang Kai-shek was in exile now. The Soviets backed Mao Zedong. Madame Chiang had no doubts about where the West's loyalty should lie. A few years ago, he was exalted for the courage and the nasty on the fight he waged. Now, he is pilloried. Russia will never know one day of peace in China. Russia will never own China. China will remain free. But it wasn't to be. Within weeks of the proclamation of the Chinese Communist State, Mao was off to Moscow to sign a pact with the Soviet Union, and other countries in the West slowly started to recognize the new regime in Peking. For the Kremlin leadership in Moscow, developments in China were a great boost. They now had a great Cold War ally. Mao would protect the long Soviet border with Asia, leaving Moscow free to concentrate its military resources in Europe. Mao, for his part, got the benefit of Soviet economic, diplomatic and military protection, while he established control of his vast country. It didn't take long. The first of the rural five-year plans was put into force, and the Communist Party bureaucracy took hold of the countryside, transforming society. But more than that, October the 1st, 1949, was the day that set the pattern of superpower politics for a generation. So tonight's video is all about how China came to be a communist country led by Mao Zedong. After World War II, China fought a civil war, and the two sides in the war were the nationalists and the communists. The nationalists were led by Chiang Kai-shek, and the communists were led by Mao Zedong. Communist forces won the war by 1949 and created the People's Republic of China, led by Mao Zedong. They set up the capital of their government in the city of Beijing. The nationalists, who had lost in Chiang Kai-shek, fled to the offshore island of Taiwan, where they set up a competing government called the Republic of China, whose capital was at Taipei. When Mao Zedong took over Communist China, he had a couple different goals he wanted to achieve. He wanted to make a totalitarian government with absolute control. He wanted to abandon Western and traditional Chinese attitudes. He wanted to make China a modern industrial and agricultural nation. He wanted to distribute land to peasants and improve living conditions in China. And he also wanted to build clinics, schools, roads, railways, canals, and he wanted to do all this by having the government control the economy. The Great Leap Forward was one way that Mao Zedong wanted to achieve his communist goals. The Great Leap Forward was an economic plan launched in 1958 
It was aimed at drastically boosting the Chinese economy by increasing the productivity of Chinese workers. And it meant that a lot of Chinese workers had to abandon their other jobs and start working on producing industrial things like steel. All in all, the Great Leap Forward was a massive failure for China. It resulted in food shortages or famines and encountered some peasant resistance. As a result of the Great Leap Forward, over 20 million Chinese died from starvation. After the failure of the Great Leap Forward, Chairman Mao came up with something called the Cultural Revolution. And what this was, was a 1966 movement led by Mao that called for strict obedience to revolutionary principles, which really meant strict obedience to Mao's teachings. This was Mao's attempt to strengthen his social control in China. And as a result, young people formed groups called the Red Guards, and they went around basically enforcing Mao's wishes and his teachings. Mao's quotes were published in the Little Red Book, which was something that almost every child carried on them. Millions of his books were sold. And young people attacked politicians and teachers for betraying Chairman Mao, for teaching or acting against his revolutionary principles. And people who were accused were often publicly humiliated and sometimes killed. As a result of the massive changes from the Cultural Revolution, China experienced a time of disorder and confusion. Many schools closed, factory production dropped, and violence erupted. Eventually, in 1968, Mao had to use the army to restore order in China. But by that point, thousands had already been killed, and millions of people's lives had been changed or drastically altered as a result of this cultural revolution. In terms of foreign relations, as China was undergoing this cultural revolution, they mostly avoided contact with the Western world in countries like the U.S. But by the 1970s, China's desire for advanced technology made them reach out to the U.S. In 1972, U.S. President Richard Nixon made a historic visit to China, and you can see a picture of them meeting here on this slide. This visit represents the start of better relations between China and the Western world, including the U.S. 